Testing one, two, three. Good evening. Welcome to Friday Night Light. I'm Pastor John, standing in for Pastor Dan. And if I tilt my glasses down, I can actually see you. <laughs> it's a little blurry. <laughs> good evening. How's everybody doing? Great. Amen. Amen. God is good. Well, we're going to get into the Word of God, but we're going to start with a word of prayer. It's good to see you guys. And uh, for some reason, this half of the room seems heavier. <laughs> Is there something I need to know about this side of the room? No? No? Okay. All right. <laughs> well, let's pray and we'll get started, okay? Uh, well, Father God, I just thank you for your word. I thank you for your love for, the, for us, your people, for this time that you give us, Lord, where we can take your word and we can open it up and we can re you reveal your heart to us through your word, Lord. And I just pray, Father, that you, uh, we would be lifted up, edified, and encouraged. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, um, this evening, we're going to talk about the Lord in our hardships. Aren't you glad you came to church? <laughs> I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So, we're going to be in Acts chapter 16, and we're going to read verses 16 through 34, and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of background about what's going on, in case you don't know. This is the second missionary journey of Paul, the apostle. He's in the Bible, in case you didn't know. But uh, what's happening right now is that they've come into Philippi. They've come across the Aegean Sea, which is between Turkey and Greece. And what's happened is, is the Lord has prevented them from going north in Turkey to go up to um, where you, we would find uh, Constantinople, where the little lamp bridge is there. It's a very narrow strip of water. And the reason why the Holy Spirit hasn't revealed, but literally God has stopped them, from going over. And uh, they've already met someone in that city named Lydia, and she's already, the Lord has opened her heart to come and believe. And it seems like, it's amazing, like the Holy Spirit revealed into a, in a dream to Paul that they needed to go over there. There was a man in Macedonia, Macedonia calling them over. They get there, first per place they go, they go down to the river. Uh, where there's no, um, it's an outpost. Uh, Philippi is actually an outpost of the Roman Empire. Um, it's there's no synagogue there. there. Apparently, there's not enough Jewish men there to actually start a synagogue. Which, if you don't know what a synagogue is, it's basically what we would consider a church <laughs> in a in the Jewish sense. Um, it's a mini of the big, if you will. Um, but anyway, um, so. After um, starting this conversation with these ladies, this woman who's very influential, um, Paul is heading back down to the river again uh, to, to talk to more people. You know? And I love it that it's a conversation that they have with her, uh, with Lydia, that is. But anyway, um, so when they're on their way, we're going to pick up in Vic verse 16. It says, Now it happened as we went to prayer. Notice that they were going to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who bought, bought her master's profit by fortune-telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. And Paul was greatly annoyed. That word is actually better, like, uh, disturbed. Or, or, or It wasn't that he was like, Ew, this girl. But it was more, it was concerned. It was more a better word. Um, uh, but it says, annoyed, and turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of her that very hour. But her master saw that their hope of profit was gone. They seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them before the magistrates and said, These men bring Jews, these men being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, but being Romans, to receive or observe. And uh, the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. 
Having received a, a, such a charge, he put them in the inner prison and fastened their, their feet in the stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. And the keeper of the prison walked away, or, or awakening from sleep, not walked away, Awakening from sleep, seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword, and he was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And, Sil and then he called for light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must we do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. And when they spoke the word of the Lord to him and, and, and to all who were in his house, they took them on that same hour of the night and washed their stripes. Immediately he and all his family were baptized. And when they had brought them to, into his house, he set food before them, and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Now, the reason why I read the whole account there is because Something good was supposed to happen, right? I mean, when God calls us to live life for him, good things are supposed to happen, right? Right? Well, he said no. Why, why, why not? not? Not always. Wait, isn't this supposed to be our best life, right? No? Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't, it, 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 but, but what happened? These guys, they got called, right? Wasn't it the Holy Spirit who gave Paul the dream to come over? Wasn't there a man in his dream, a man saying, come over here? Wasn't Lydia saved? Wasn't this slave girl who, who was possessed with his spirit, wasn't her being set free from slavery? Wasn't that a good thing? But, but they got beaten. They got beaten a lot. You know what they got beaten with? They got, there's this bundle of... 13, if you look on the United States, uh, I think it's on the back of the dime or the, or the penny, there's a bundle of rods and then there's an a, a axe in the middle of it. And what it represents is the, um, the, like, literally the authority and the strength and the and ability to take your life from you. <laughs> and there were these soldiers who would carry them. And, and they were bearers of these things. And they were um, legionnaires. So they were, uh, in this particular city, there was many legionnaires who were retired soldiers. And if you retired as a Roman soldier, you were a very powerful man. Okay? You had lived through many, many battles. And these men came in and they beat them. And they didn't beat them 39 times and, and then stop because 39 minus 1, that's a Jewish. No, they beat them until they stopped. Okay? So this horrible thing happens to them. They're in the will of God, right? And this horrible thing happens. But what? But did they hear God right? Was were they wrong? And so they're they're taken. They're put in, into this prison, and they're not just put into the prison. Not just like they're put into the center of the prison where there's no light. Their feet are put in stocks. Their hands are put in chains. They um, probably can't get comfortable at all because of their backs. And th in the middle of all this, they start singing. They start praising. They start praying. And I just made some observations, and I just that's I just want to go through these one bit at a time with you guys and just talk to you about this. Because life as a Christian does not guarantee us that we won't have hardship. As a matter of fact, Hardships come even though we've done nothing wrong. Okay? On the wall, John 16.33. This is the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, The things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have what? Tribulation. Does that sound like a good thing? It doesn't. It doesn't. But he says, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Right? So, yes, we are going to have things happen. Things that don't, things that will test you to the core. You know, when I was, uh, oh, it has to be about five, six years ago now. I remember it was a Tuesday. And I got a call from my sister. 
and she told me that my brother Sean was in the hospital, that he had had a heart attack. And I was just having a good day. You know, I, I had a day off. It was cool. It was Tuesday. And uh, I got another phone call, and I'm praying. And uh, my brother had passed away. Right? That's real. I didn't know what to do. But I hit my knees because w- the strength was gone. And I just remember weeping. And I remember looking our, to the Lord. I remember saying, I love you, Lord. I love you. You know? But he was with me. And I can't tell you the, the, I, the word of God tells Jesus himself said right there, he said, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. He gave me his peace. It wasn't okay. It didn't feel good. Okay? But he gave me his peace. And that's what you see in these men. Right? These men called of God to preach his word, to bring the gospel to the nations. This is the first step into Europe. Okay? It's in Greece. Right? They've come up through Syria, over through Turkey, across the Aegean Sea, into Greece. Right? And the first step into, if you will, the enemy's territory, which I even shudder to say that, like God owns everything. So, but they're there, right? And I'll tell you, I wouldn't know how to comfort someone else if I didn't go through what I went through. Because it was going to happen. There's nothing I could do to stop it. I didn't do anything wrong. It just happened. But the Lord was there. Right? And not only, so hardships come, even though we do nothing wrong. But the Lord will be there. He will bring His peace to you. Secondly, the children of God have the promise. Notice I said that. The children of God have the promise. And the assurance that though we go through hardships, the Lord will be with us in it and through it. And you know, I can say this, but we have to believe it. Right? We have to know. David said, I would have fainted if I had not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Right? We must believe to see it. And, you know, I'm not talking about building yourself up, in, but to to believe what the word of the Lord says. And Jesus said in uh, on the wall, Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. Jesus said, uh, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, this is the, one of the last things he told them in the book of Matthew. He said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Amen? All authority. Right? We have an assurance there. Right? All authority in heaven and earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen? And he makes himself known. Right? I have struggled in my life financially. I have struggled emotionally. I have struggled spiritually. I have struggled mentally. And God has met me on every single level as I have cried out to him and obeyed him as I, he spoke to me. You know? And that's our promise from our king. You know? And I'm telling you, it takes time. right? It takes time. Disciples aren't made just by snapping your fingers. right? It takes a conversation. It takes taking ourselves and putting ourselves in the hands of God. And, and allowing those hardships, if you will, to happen but to happen in his hands, right? Because I can't control life as much as I try to. I can't, as many times as I want people not to be angry with me or not to, be, to, not to push me away, right? As much as I want to go to this place and my car won't start and my, you know, my key busted in my door and I can't get out the front door, I've got to trust that he's with me, and that he's in control. So these guys, they're in there, they're in the center of a prison, 
but they held on to the Word of God, right? They held on to the, to the dream, right? The Holy Spirit, as they're praying, they're, they're, they're praying to, for the will of God. And I know you, you guys, I love you guys. You guys love the will of God. We pray the will of God, right? Lord, I want to do what you want. I don't want to just do nothing, you know, or do something just because I can do it, you know? I want to be in your will. And so these men, they're, they're praying the will of God, and the Holy Spirit is leading them, and it leads into a prison. <laughs> but there's somebody in that prison, right? And, and it says, and I, I'm going to say it again, it says, we have the assurance that we, that we go through these hardships that the Lord will be with us and, and, and will walk with us through it, right? So they're trusting, right? Because they didn't read the story. They just were living it. <laughs> they, they didn't have the New Testament, Testament. They were living it, right? But they made a choice in the middle of this to praise and sing to God. Right. So, and number three, our, our, our hardships and pain of heart are never without purpose or wasted. There is purpose in this. I don't know what you're going through, but I do know this. There is a purpose in this. Because there was a jailer in that jail who needed to know Christ. Who was just existing, right? How many people do we know that are just existing, right? They're just going to the next pleasure, going to the next stop, the next excitement, or not even, just lost in a world of whatever, or lost in the world, right? But God, you know, sometimes in order to lay a foundation, there's hard work that has to come first, right? And these men have laid a foundation in Philippi. As a matter of fact, Paul himself will reap from that because in the Philippians chapter 4, I believe, uh, he talks in 4, it's one of the verses we love to quote. I think it's 419. It says, you know, he is able uh, to supply all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We like to, to say that, but it was literally like they supported Paul, right? Because they loved him, right? Because he had brought the gospel to them. The church was started there. But in this, in this time, I see a slave girl free, right? And isn't the cost of being hardship or being put into prison, isn't that worth it for her soul, right? And this man who's in the middle of that, isn't it worth his soul? And I don't know what God is doing you're like, I can't go, okay, God is going to do this, 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 this. No, because I don't even know what he's doing like that with me. <laughs> but he has purpose in this, and it will not be wasted. Whatever you've lived through, if you, if you trust him, right, if you, if you lean on him, right? Um, t- if you guys have your Bibles, can you turn to Genesis chapter 50? Genesis chapter 50. We're actually in Genesis on Sunday. There's a shameless promo. <laughs> and uh, this is um, 50, and we're going to be verse 15 to 21. But Joseph, uh, he had some hardships, didn't he? Would you say so? This is after his father has just passed away, which, you know, my mom passed away a couple years ago, and that was very hard. Um, but I thank God because in it he gave me the last opportunity to preach the gospel to her. Even though she was unable to speak, she could hear me, which is like if you knew my mom, you know that my mom just not talking was awesome because (laughs) she always had something to say. (laughs) But uh, I was able to preach the gospel in her ear as she was on her bed going home. And um, here... Joseph, his father has just died, and his brothers are afraid because, man, what if this guy? See, fear comes into your heart, and it gets and it speaks to you, and it can lie to you, right? And it says these what well, these guys are like, man. Are, it was, he says, though Joseph saw that their father was dead, and they said, perhaps Joseph will hate us and actually repay us for the evil which we did to him. So they sent messengers to Joseph saying, Before your father died, he commanded us saying, 
Thus you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespasses of your brothers in their sin, for they did evil to you. Now please forgive their trespasses of, this, of the servants of the, of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they, sent, when they spoke this to him. Okay? So they're afraid, right? Because they're sins, right? And Joseph is like, he weeps because he's already forgiven. Right? And he says, you know, uh, and Joseph said to them, don't be afraid, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is to this day to save many people alive. Now therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. See, they were absolutely responsible for what they did. right? And it happened to Joseph. It was in God's hands. And that's us. As we love the Lord and serve the Lord, and these things happen, the Lord, he, he can use for good what others meant for evil. And these, this broken and, 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 and this broken world we live in. You know, I, I was driving along the, the 90 today. I was doing a, a medication pickup in uh, Waterloo. <laughs> I, if you ever want to see the state of humanity, just watch, watch the roads. <laughs> and uh, there, there were people, and we are just not patient with each other. We, we are not. We're, this, the thought is this, because I don't know if you guys have ever had this thought. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I just need to. But why are they going so slow? Why don't you get over? Right? <laughs> what is the matter with you people? Right? And I'm sitting there thinking this. Oh, wow, this is this is really the p- being controlled by the peace of the Holy Spirit right now. <laughs> but I do have the Holy Spirit within me that can help me in these times. And here's Joseph. And 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 you know, as we look at our world and we see, you know, on Sunday I was talking about the divisions that we have in this world. As we look at these men and their fear that their brother's going to judge them, Joseph sees it differently. And that's my prayer for us, is that we would see it differently too. Is that when these things are happening to us, that we would see that God has his hand on us. Don't be dismayed. Right? I was talking to a brother last night, and I asked him, I said, uh, what do you do when, uh, when, uh, when, you're, when you're in hardship? What do you do? You know, what do you do? You know, what do you guys do? It's, you can answer the question. You pray? Yeah, pray. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I try to sing, too. You know, I, I, I love singing. You know, um, I'll sing in my house. and I'll talk to the Lord in my house because he's alive. <laughs> he's alive in me. And, and um, you know, we we tend to um i'm not going to do the next wall verse by the way there's three things that the lord pulled out for me personally and um um so in order to 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 live this life in order to have hope in order to um to walk right to walk with the lord the first thing i always need to do is trust him right because it's hard right i mean there are things that i live through that i can't i don't have an answer other than trust right and i don't have an answer for another one other than trust but i have the answer i have it right um proverbs 3 verse 5 through 8 it says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil, and it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. That's a promise. And that is where it goes, right? Because i got to trust. i got to trust, right? That it's it's got to be real. i got to put my hands on it, right? Because it's going... Things around me go crazy, and I can't stop these things. People I care about, things are happening. I can't stop them. But I can trust in the Lord. 
right? That he's got it. He's got it in his hands, right? I was thinking about Jesus. I'm actually going to go back to that verse now, back to uh, uh, Luke 23, 34. When Jesus was on the cross, no one would have looked at the cross and said that that was good, right? They would have looked at the cross and go, whoa, this guy's getting killed. He didn't do nothing. As a matter of fact, one of the thieves said that about him. He didn't do anything. You know, we're getting what we deserve, right? Don't you fear God? But he said, and Jesus said, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they, they divided his garments and cast lots. That's a, right after that, right? And he's saying, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing, right? He was working something. And that's the point. He's working something. I don't know what's going on in your life. The Lord really put this in my heart. Okay? There are things happening all around, and God is working. He, it's not going to be wasted. Right? He's going to be with you. Right? Trust Him. Trust Him. And it, it's, it's, it's basic, but it's absolutely true. Right? It's foundational. Right? And then... Pray, right? Pray. If you don't, if, I don't know who's listening to me right now, but if you don't know what prayer is, talk to God. <laughs> then you'll be praying, right? But it's important to pray and to know what to pray and who this one that you're praying to is, right? There's so much in uh, Psalms 119 about the Word of God. You know, how, how shall a young man make his way clean? I give heed to your word, O oh Lord. You know, that, that, but it's so important that when we pray that we know who we're praying to. So we're not praying prayers that, like, that's not, God can't answer that, right? Because that, that's not who he is, you know? God, give me a Maserati, right? I don't need a Maserati. God doesn't need me to have a Maserati, right? I don't want a Maserati. I don't like to have stuff. <laughs> it means I have to take care of more of it. If he wants me to have something, then I want it. Right? It says, Philippians 4, verse 5 through 9, pray in, in, in this prayer, it says, Let your gentleness be known to all men. And I love this. It says, The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. If there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these. Not just let it pass through, but give it a place within you. Right? Meditate on it. Right? The goodness of God, the love of God, the grace of God, the kindness of God. Right? The, the power of God. To, to, to meet us in those hardships, to meet us in the very places that we are. And then sing, because I love to sing. And these are the two things that my friend and I talked about. We talked about prayer, and we talked about singing, and that's what Paul and Silas did. They sang, and they prayed in there. And I don't know what kind of earthquakes God's got in his bag, but apparently they're ones that open doors and take chains off, right? That's amazing. I was like, what? What kind of earthquake is this? But Psalms 100, verse 1 to 5, it says, A psalm of thanksgiving. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God, and He it is he who made us, and we not ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Amen? Trust him. Pray. Sing. You know, hard, hard things are going to come. It, it, it's just not going to stop. But the Lord can sustain us and we can grow. Right? You know, when my mom passed, I really had to learn how to grieve, right? Because 
I had grieved for my brother, and that was like automatic. But it took almost two to three years for me to really grieve. And that's okay, right? Because we weren't designed for this. But it was patiently the Lord working with me and me being honest and open in my heart and letting Him touch my heart and letting me, and spending the time with Him so that I could even talk to you about this, right? So don't be in a hurry, <laughs> okay? Whatever you're going through. Right, and I'm going to pray, and then uh, we'll talk afterwards. And I pray the Lord blesses you all. Right? Father God, uh, just thank you for your word, Lord. I thank you that no matter where we find ourselves, Lord, we can trust you. We can pray, and we can know that you hear us and answer us. And Lord, not only that, but it doesn't matter the circumstance, because if it's in your hands, Lord, like your word says in Romans, you work all things together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And I thank you we can trust you in that, Lord. Help us to rest in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.